All right, everyone, the deep state fears the meme. Link in the description archived, of course. You can follow along with this hit piece. Um, it is a dog whistle for censorship. The basic premise, well, the front-loaded premise, is that Donald Trump caused an insurrection with Pepe memes. That's basically the premise of the article. I know that that seems laughable to 99.9% .9 of you because you probably understand internet culture to some degree and, you know, why memes are funny, why they're entertaining, how a cartoon did not cause an insurrection. It's sort of like when Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering or Iron Maiden records spun backwards or something like that was going to cause devil worship. Never really true. Um, it's bullshit. Everyone realizes it. No Pokemon don't possess your kid. Harry Potter is not leading to an outbreak of witchcraft practicing etc 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 we've seen this horse shit before always oh, same shit different asshole same shit different half decade or thereabouts the last five years has definitely been a crusade to try to uh, clean up and, and remove disinformation from the internet which means pumping it full of state propaganda and disinformation like this is but the encapsulated front-end message is even funnier than the reason for it. The reason is to try to provoke censorship, to get Soccer Mom America once again afraid of Pepe the Frog. It's going to cause your kid to become a skinhead. But the, the front message is that Donald Trump, who really himself didn't post memes quite as often, it was really people who supported him more than anything else. I would say Don Jr. is probably the meme lord of the family. Hell, Baron Trump probably understands more about Pepe than Donald does. Uh, the basic premise is that he basically hypnotized people by using funny memes. He managed to cause the U.S. government to almost undergo a coup. They were almost successful at overthrowing the government. Now, keep, keep in mind, the people making that claim also claim um, that, that, that also claim that it's impossible to go up against like the US military and that's why you should give up your guns because you don't have a chance but a few thousand people that were largely unarmed um, going into the capital after being in some cases literally waved in by the guards there that was that's scary stuff let alone the only person that died that actual day was a protester uh, say her name Ashley Babbitt still see her getting defamed constantly which is a uh, totally unethical and morally wrong, but the legacy media does that as well. When we look at what happened that day, of course, it wasn't an insurrection. It was a fiery but mostly peaceful protest, mostly minus the fire. A lot more uh, law-abiding than uh, Antifa members seem to be, or other communist groups, or even standard uh, so-called progressive leftoids when they get together to throw rocks and shit at the police. There's a lot more violence and injuries that go on there than what happened at the U.S. Capitol. And the fact is it wasn't an insurrection at all, which is why that particular charge has only been brought against a very small proportion of the people that are charged at all for what they did that day. Most of them remain minor charges. Vandalism. Simple trespass. Simple assault things of that nature. Lesser crimes, misdemeanors, not sedition, not insurrection, not terroristic threats, nothing major. The deep state has been livid about meme culture now for more than half a decade, and I tried to explain years ago why this is. Memes can be made to encapsulate meanings in an irreducible form. So you'd think of the classic Pepe image, smug frog, so to speak. It encapsulates the meaning of smugness due to a generally agreed upon meaning of that character, and it can't really be reduced down further. You can make, uh, you can reduce it stylistically, like you can have a series of loops and lines that represent Pepe and take less effort to actually draw and take less pixels, less colors, but the basic premise is irreducible. Irreducible complexity is also why the right wing tends to be far better at meme making than the left. There's a classic meme about memes, an almost self-satire with regards to leftoids, in that they'll have, they'll take a meme, and usually they didn't create it themselves, and load it down with seven or eight sentences of text. And it's similar to the way in which the legacy media does lies by structures in their articles, by burying the real truth halfway down a page, like five paragraphs later. Nobody even fucking reads uh, that shit. And that's every other leftoid meme. Now, it's just a wall of text, usually, that's derived from an irreducible source. Having any text at all is usually a bad idea when you come to think of it. The concept is that Trump is some sort of warlock or wizard and understands these deep occult secrets. 
and therefore he almost provoked a coup of the U.S. government. Thank goodness it didn't work. We managed to restore democracy, but we are badly fractured as a nation. Because of Pepe the Frog and his good friend that he sometimes mutilates and rapes, uh, Wojak, uh, <laughs> this almost caused an insurrection. I'm looking at the article, and I can see through it into the real premise, uh, which I think some people won't grasp. Uh, look through this. See if you find any lies by omission or structure in there. They're there. Uh, just look a little bit harder. The real problem is that the legacy media peddles basically whatever it wants because they're actual publishers, <clears throat> unlike big tech, according to the Fifth Circuit, by the way. Covered that the other day. Uh, <laughs> Section 230 applies. What, what happens is that the legacy media builds bullshit stories and then coordinates with itself. I mean, you know, this is not the only attack on memes or attack on meme culture or the internet's free speech in general that we've seen over time. And so Fox and CNN, MSNBC, Vox, Salon, Atlantic, all of these groups, the New York Times, Washington Post, they tend to cross-train, especially on economic news. They literally do that with the Biden admin now, but they more tangentially tend to do so with other things. They coordinate together and they release a canard all at the same time. So that all of the legacy media is claiming the same thing simultaneously. It's totally coincidental and organic that they happen to say exactly the same thing sometimes and then they attempt to cause change uh, thereby. The real propaganda is not Donald Trump sharing out a Pepe meme. The real propaganda and the real threat of disinformation to the United States and to the Western world in general is calls for censorship of the internet. What the legacy media is primarily concerned about is money. They see that them, they're slipping. Uh, they're not getting on to new tech fast enough. They see that taking off. Independent content creators often pull in larger audiences than some of their primetime slots, even when algorithmically throttled. Dude, I have to fight now with two arms tied behind my back. YouTube, in the last couple of weeks, has added another level of algorithmic instability to its own site, dropping my view count even further. They literally bragged that they were doing this ahead of the U.S. midterm. So if you tend to focus on U.S. news and politics and poll analysis, you're, you're being screwed explicitly right now by YouTube as a platform. And, you know, it, it won't go away after the midterms. They'll keep that extra layer of algorithmic distortion, trust me. Interesting times we live in when liberals uh, support this premise, and it's pounding some of those independent creators too. Check out their stats sometime if you don't believe me. It's very interesting. Um, they're the ones that are a threat to democracy. If you're going to have a thriving con constitutional republic, one underpinning of which is free expression, you can't also have a government tying into corporations to fiddle with the public narrative by putting its finger on the scales in, in the weight of public discourse. But that's exactly what's happening. This is just another component of it. Anyway, uh, bask in the glory, uh, the hilarity of claiming that memes almost caused a, a constitutional crisis in the United States. We won't get too deep into it. We'll just look at it for what it really is on the very, uh, very superficial end, which is a goddamn load of fucking laughs. Again, it's basically like Satanic Panic Era, Magic the Gathering made my kid into a goth and now they're worshipping the devil or something like that. Very, very funny story. That's about all. Peace out.